guys today I decided that I'm gonna share with you the story of the birth of my fourth child um, the reason why this birth in particular is special was because um, it ended up being an unassisted home birth um, I the very first child I had I was 17 when I got pregnant and 18 when I had him so I was very young very naive very much you know do what the doctor tells you to do and you know so that was an experience and yeah I wouldn't want to redo that birth again it was not pleasant and then my second child I had a different plan of how I wanted things to go and of course things didn't go to plan um, I ended up having to be induced because um, they thought they saw something like a bowel obstruction they said you know there's something in her bowels we don't know what it is it's some kind of obstruction we don't know if it's a tumor or what so that birth experience was tough because not only was I induced which the Pitocin that they give you increases your contractions and it makes it a lot more painful um, but I had the added stress of a bunch of specialists waiting for my baby so that they could whisk her away and find out what's wrong so that was like added stress on me and I actually ended up almost having her in the toilet you know I was there's like the ring on the IV and I was holding on to the ring of the IV and I was telling my mom I've really got to go to the bathroom I don't have to go to the bathroom so she you know helped me back to the bed and within seconds of being on the bed you know I had my second child so um, then um, with my third I definitely wanted you know natural to do it in different positions because I had already been reading about um, how it's so unnatural for women to be on their back to give birth because you have to push over um, a pelvic bone um, and how unnatural it is and that's what causes a lot of the pain in the last couple minutes is because you know you're having to push a baby up over a bone and then down the birth canal so I had already been reading about that and I wanted to be you know on a birthing ball I wanted to be in an upright like squatting or all fours position to give birth and well that didn't end up going as planned because they ended up needing to speed up my labor and kept increasing the amount of Pitocin they were giving me even when I said it's working you know I feel that it's really really working you can stop giving me that because it just keeps getting worse they kept giving me more and more Pitocin against my will basically and um, the contractions got so painful that I ended up having to ask for an epidural because they had pumped me so full of Pitocin that I couldn't stand the pain um, so when I got pregnant with my fourth child I just went to the same doctor that I had with my previous pregnancy and um, you know I went to her a couple times got the first ultrasound this and that and then I really started thinking about how disappointed I have been that none of my birth plans have really gone the way I wanted them to and I felt like I feel like the medical you know aspect of it is just so overbearing and that it's such a natural experience to feel like it's so crazy and it's, it's like a natural thing so I said to my husband I said I'd really like to try you know going to like a birthing center you know the loving environment and all that so uh, so I started researching birthing centers in the area and unfortunately there was only one within like a hundred miles that accepted my insurance that my insurance um, would pay for or pay for part of and they said you know we really can't we can't take on any more clients for that due date like range of dates or whatever so then I was like well let me look into like a midwife and having like a home birth so I started looking into that my insurance didn't cover it at all um, tried to think of ways that we could afford it and it just wasn't just wasn't going to be something that we were going to be able to afford so thinking that you know I wasn't going to be able to do 
it the way I wanted to do it and I was going to end up back at the hospital like with all the others. Doing some research online, I came across um, some books and some other literature about an assisted home birth and um, basically how we're all animals, right? And we have instincts, you know, that makes a lot of sense. But when you look at the science side of things, like since we are animals, our bodies like have natural reactions to outside stimuli. So, you know, reading about um, like the flight or fight response, um, being an animal about to give birth, um, it's our it's our natural instinct to crawl into our den or our cave or our comfort place you know no harsh lighting you know natural soft lighting um, quiet peaceful surrounded by you know the people that are closest to us that's what our body wants but we put our body while well, it's going through this traumatic experience and then we put it into a room full of strangers touching and prodding and poking and noises and lights and noise in the hallway and it triggers the flight or fight response in our bodies. Now what that does is it takes all the, the blood that's going to your uterus to help your uterus give birth. It takes that blood and that life source away and it sends it to your arms and your legs because it thinks it's going to have to fight for its life, right? So now you've taken that away. You've taken all that energy away from your uterus, okay? And that's what causes a lot of the extra pain. So now you've taken all that, that energy and life away from your uterus and you've sent it to your arms and your legs. So now your uterus isn't functioning the way it's meant to. Um, and then you end up, like I did, getting shot full of Pitocin to the point where you're like in agony. Um, so anyways, so reading a little bit more about like the scientific stuff um, and just really trying to bring my brain back to we are animals like this is a natural experience this is something that this is you know one of the things that we have natural instincts about at first my husband thought I was crazy and he was like ah, I really don't know you know it sounds so um, against the grain <laughs> so to speak like he didn't think it was safe because people don't do it and I thought you know, it wasn't until the last, like, hundred years, not even, that everybody went to the hospital to give birth. You know, people have been having babies at home for millennia, you know. And so then it just, it just started working on me, and I kept talking to my husband about it and how I felt like it was the right thing to do. And, you know, he started to come on board, and he was like, all right. So then we started researching things like, um... Uh, for him to do like checking my cervix which I could have done myself but because my my husband was gonna be there you know and we wanted to both be involved you know we started um, researching like how to check a cervix and you know different signs to look for and different um, things to do you know for him to help me in labor um, so as the day got closer so I kind of put my own kit together. I sanitized towels. I put them in a paper bag. You know, I read about how to store it, and we had everything ready. I bought um, I bought a tablecloth, one of the ones that's got vinyl on one side and felt on the other, and I put that down. Put a blanket. You know that that was going to be my moisture barrier to my floor. Um, so I mean, we were ready. And the last thing we needed, and it's so funny, is. We actually kind of looked for, um, we went to a couple medical supply places here in town trying to find a cord clamp and we, we couldn't find one. So I said, well, I wonder if we just went to a hospital and just like asked for one if they would give us one, you know. But what my husband ended up doing is he ended up um, ordering it off the internet. And so when that came in, we felt like, okay, we're ready to do this, you know, because that was one thing that bugged my husband. I said, but we can use a shoelace, we can use this, we can use that. We can use a barrette and he was just like no I want a cord clamp so whatever we got the cord clamp and uh, he was happy with that so um, the actual night that I went into labor he was at work 
and you know I, I texted him and I was like you know I had the little app on my phone for like tracking your contractions and I was like you know it's they're starting to get kind of regular um, so it was very early on and then so through the night you know it intensified a bit but I was by myself well my kids were here asleep but for the most part I was by myself in my bed watching television just chilling you know tracking um, my contractions and you know labor progressed and progressed and then finally about like five o'clock in the morning I text my husband I said you might want to go ahead and start heading this way you know I feel like it's getting kind of rough you know so then I also called my mother um, who just lives a couple blocks away I'm definitely having this baby soon you know and uh, then when my husband got home um, he helped me into the shower and I took a shower for a while just you know rocking in the shower and letting the water just like hit my body and that felt real good um, and then so then after I got out of the shower I told my husband I said well I think it's got to be really close so why don't we go ahead and check my cervix and <laughs> so so I get in position and he goes and gets his latex glove that he had ready you know and so he's checking and I don't know if he put his finger in the baby's mouth or the baby's nose or the baby's ear or what but he was like baby you're only like two centimeters and I'm thinking that's crazy because I feel like you know it's time or whatever so I just kind of was like all right you know so I'm gonna be at this for a while and I went and I sat on the bed and then I think I kind of laid on my side for a little bit and then I remember turning to him and saying, I need to get on the floor. Because the floor is where we had, you know, the birthing area set up. You know, padding. And it was all lush and pillows and stuff. So I said, I think I need to get to the floor. And he's like, all right. So he starts helping me. And I remember, like, kind of rolling off the bed and one knee on the ground and one foot on the ground. And I felt like, you know, it was really coming. And as soon as I put my other knee on the ground, it was like one big, ah, and she was here. And the amazing thing was, is it was, I mean, honestly, there was discomfort with the contractions. I mean, obviously, but I cannot say that it was painful. And that is something I never thought I'd say about childbirth, but it, really was not painful it was uncomfortable and there was discomfort and there was a lot of pressure but as far as like with my other children like the screaming and pain there was none of that like it was the most calm and peaceful experience so she she came out and I had already decided that um, we weren't gonna cut the cord or clamp the cord or anything until I delivered the placenta because they say it's healthier for the baby to stay attached to the umbilical cord until the placenta is delivered. Um, and to, basically that keeps them attached to you, you know, at the same point. So um, she was still attached to that. Um, I put her to breast. Um, she wasn't too interested at first. Um, so we just did some skin to skin time. And um, then, let's see, then I delivered the placenta and we went ahead and we clamped the cord, my husband clamped the cord and cut the cord, and my mother and my husband, um, you know, gave her her first cleansing, and I think another cool thing about having the home birth was none of my other pregnancies or births was I ever offered the chance to see the placenta, and some people might say, oh, that's gross, but the way I look at it is that placenta is what gave my child oxygen and blood and nutrients and that placenta was vital to my child making it into this world so looking at it I mean it was it was an emotional experience and and it's really cool like you'll hear people say tree of life and when you look at the placenta it really does you know from where the umbilical cord attaches it really does look like a tree um, it's quite an amazing piece of work <laughs> um, so that was definitely interesting and my recovery was like 
it was so amazingly fast. I basically, they gave the baby her first cleansing. Um, after I got done, you know, checking out the placenta, I hopped in the shower, cleaned myself off, um, got into bed, you know, and then bonded with my baby for a couple hours. But I mean, I was up walking around. I was doing great. The very next morning, we went downtown to get a birth certificate. Um, I felt great. Um, so not only was the labor so peaceful and the actual giving birth painless, the quick recovery, I mean, I felt great, you know. So um, that was the most amazing experience I've ever been through. Okay, so that was my experience with unassisted home birth. And if you have any questions or comments about my experience, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. I'm happy to share about my experience because I feel like it was one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. And it is um, the one birth experience that I can say finally went the way I wanted it to. And it was absolutely amazing. And I'm happy to share about it. So please. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thank you guys for watching. I know it was a long one. And for any of you guys who made it all the way through this, <laughs> thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Do it the way God intended us to do it, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah.